Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Final day. Hallelujah. I said praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Tonight again we come because of redemption. The Lord has purchased and the Lord has provided redemption. Full redemption. Perfect redemption. Total redemption. For you. And whatever you have not got on day number one, day number two, day number three, Day number four, day number five, final day. Yeah. You will have, you receive, yeah. you possess in Jesus' name. Yeah. There's power in that name. There's healing in that name. There's redemption in that name. The solution to every problem in that name. And I come to you tonight in that name, almighty, all-powerful, all-sufficient name of Jesus. Everything is yours tonight. Everything is mine tonight. The Lord confirm it to your life in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you and bless your name. We thank you for what you have done, for what you are doing, and for what you continue to do. And Lord, I pray that today, in every life, in every ministry, in every family, you confirm your word in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray tonight you'll touch everyone. Amen. You deliver everyone. Amen. And you bring your salvation, redemption, salvation to everyone in Jesus' name. Amen. I thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. <clears throat> Before you sit down, shout redemption. Shout total redemption. Mine. Mine. Just tonight in Jesus' name. You can see that we come to the final day of this full redemption crusade. As we were having the nation singing from various nations. And when I saw the Egyptian choir and they sang, my mind went back to the first time I was invited to Egypt to come and conduct a week of crusade. Now, when we got there, there were challenges. The people there, that church in particular, and a lot of Orthodox churches, they had never seen direct miracle, healing, and were there. And actually, the pastor invited us. He spoke to me. He said, please, don't preach like you preach back home in Nigeria. I said, why? He said, look at those people there at the back. They are there for security. And every word you speak, they note down. If you say anything that they don't agree with, they report to the government that same night. And then, they will whisk you back to your country and then you'll never come again. He said, you're here? I said, yes, sir. <laughs> and then, here, this is not Pentecostal healing something. He said, you're here? I said, yes, sir. You know, 
I go to many places. And when they tell me things, I don't argue. I leave them alone. And then I began. And I spoke. And what we did, at that time there was no transmission like this all over the world. We recorded whatever we did, like on Monday night. And in the night, we reproduced that. We linked up with many churches in Egypt. And in the night, we'll take those recorded messages to them. So that what we preach on Tuesday or Monday, they relay on Tuesday. What we preach on Tuesday, they relay on Wednesday up to the end of the week. You know, some of those churches, that one week, they doubled their attendance. I thought there would be Fayel start clapping there. And then, <clears throat> as I began to speak, I didn't think about what the pastor said, because he was saying it out of fear. And I preached the word, and I brought the word and the message of redemption, of life eternal. And then I said, now we're going to pray for those who need Christ in their lives. If you want to have Jesus as your personal savior, those two security people at the back, they raised up their hands. <laughs> Salvation, redemption came to them. And then we began to pray for the sick. And I said, now we're going to pray for the sick. They've never seen anything like that before. And in one of the locations that I went later, when I wanted to do that, a medical doctor came to the front because he wanted to see all those people. And I just stood at the pulpit, just like I do here. And then I prayed, healing there, healing there, healing there. They started coming out. They wanted to give testimony. The doctor said, no. I will examine you myself. He examined them. It's some miracle, raw miracle. And they began to give testimony. To cut a long story short, that doctor gave his life to the Lord and became a member of the church in Egypt. God is at work. And here tonight, in Yenegoa, by Yelstar State, our own stage. You don't know what I will tell you. The government of Bayelsa State, through the deputy governor, has now conferred on me the privilege of being a citizen of Bayelsa State. <laughs> Praise the Lord! And so, when you look at me, don't say he's from, from where I, am I? <laughs> from my Elsa state. The Lord will bless us tonight. And as we come tonight, I'm talking on redemption. I'm talking on timeless, perpetual redemption through blood of Jesus. We're looking at First Peter. First Peter chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 18. First Peter chapter 1, reading from verse 18. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold, from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers. Then in verse 19. The word tells us. But. With the precious blood. Of Christ. As of a lamb. Without blemish. And without spot. In the blood. The blood of Christ. The lamb of God. That taketh away the sin of the world, the sickness of the world, the suffering of the world, the Lamb 
the blood, the redemptive blood, the saving blood that comes and it flows into your life. What can take away my stain, wash away all my guilt, nothing but the blood of Jesus Christ. It's through that blood, the blood of Jesus, tonight we have timeless redemption, perpetual redemption, instantaneous redemption, a kind of redemption that prepares us for life eternal. Three things we're going to talk about. Number one, marvelous heritage of salvation through the blood bought redemption. The redemption has been purchased for us and it is bought by the blood of the Lamb. Number two, miraculous healing of sicknesses through the beating, bleeding Redeemer. He was scourged. He was smitten. Stripes were laid on him and by those stripes you are healed tonight. Number three, meaningful holiness in sanctification through the boundless, blameless redemption. Let's look at number one. Number one, marvelous heritage of salvation through his blood bought redemption. It tells us in, in Romans chapter 3, reading from verse 23, it says, For all have sinned. The high, the low, the man, the woman, the boy, the girl, the Nigerian, the African, the American, the European, everyone all over the world, in every generation, in the fourth century, until this time, all have seen. Notice, it doesn't say that all will keep on sinning. It doesn't say that. It doesn't say all are helpless and everyone will remain in sin. It doesn't say that. It says in our past life, before we met Christ, before Christ became our Savior, our Redeemer, before He became the final sacrifice, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. How do we move? From that stage of sinfulness and we move to the salvation of God look at verse 24 in verse 24 being justified freely being justified freely by his grace was grace God's redemption at Christ's expense Christ paid for it all he paid for your salvation. That's grace. He paid for your freedom. That's grace. Without you doing anything, the grace of God, G for God, R for redemption, A for art, and C for Christ, E for expense. When you put everything together, grace means God's redemption, at Christ's expense. Grace means God's righteousness at Christ's expense. Christ paid for your righteousness and the grace will bring you to the righteousness of God. Grace is God's riches at Christ's expense. The riches of heaven, the riches of the righteous life, and the riches of the mighty power of God. Grace brings you the redemption, the righteousness, the riches of God at Christ as well. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. And then he says in verse 25, verse 25, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith, in his blood in the blood that gives us cleansing in the blood that gives us conversion in the blood that gives us covering in the blood that keeps us 
a new life. And now we are declared we are the children of God through the faith we have in the blood of Christ to declare his righteousness for the remission, for the removal, for the forgiveness, for the taking away of sin that are passed through the forbearance of God. And the blood has been shed already. And the salvation is available already. And the salvation will be yours tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Give me good by years of stage. Amen. Amen. And then uh, it's that blood, the blood of the Lamb, the blood of Christ, the blood of a Redeemer that gives us total freedom. Freedom. It sets us free from sin. And we do not continue in the path of darkness. We do not continue in the way of darkness. We do not continue in the lifestyle of darkness anymore. Because the blood has redeemed us. And tonight, final night of this redemption crusade, as you hand over your life unto the Lord, total redemption will be for you in Jesus' name. Look at that, First Peter chapter 1 again, reading from verse 18, First Peter chapter 1, Verse 18, it says, For as much as ye know, for as much as ye know, look at that word, no, no, no. There are different levels of knowing. You can open a book, read, and then you know mentally. You can come across the author of that book. And he relates with you. And he talks to you. And you know him socially. Then it happens that the author of that book, which you read, and from what you read, you knew mentally. Now you came across him, and you interact together. And you talk together. And you know him socially. And then as you keep on talking, he gets interested in you, if you're a lady. You get interested in him as a man. And then you begin to plan. And eventually, you get married. You don't just know him now. He's writing mentally. You just don't know him now, socially, now. You know him intimately in relationship. Because now you are husband and wife. There are people that know Christ mentally. They've been to Sunday school. And they've been to church a lot of time. And when you mention Christ, they say, yes, I know him mentally. And when you mention the salvation of the Lord, I know that mentally. When you mention, if we confess our sins, if faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Say, Pastor, I can tell you what that is in the Bible. First John chapter 1 verse 9, he knows that mentally. But, you now continue. You want to know him, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. You go from knowing him mentally, socially, and now you know him intimately. Is now your savior, is now your redeemer, and you can tell I felt his presence, I experienced his cleansing, I know. Him. That's the knowledge we're talking about here now. For as much as she know that she were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers. Look at verse 19. But 
of the precious blood of Christ. He shed his blood for you. And you know that, not from the history books. You know that, not just by hearing somebody talk. You know it experientially. That the blood of Jesus, as you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, that blood without blemish and without spot, has now wiped your sins away and taken your sins away. Look at uh, verse uh, 22. In verse 22 there, he tells us, he says, Sin, ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth. When you know Christ experientially, he dips his hand in your soul, and he cleanses your soul. He takes away that evil, that sin, that transgression, that iniquity in your soul. And he cleanses you. And then he tells us, he says that it is through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. And see now that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. See that now you are saved, you are redeemed, the blood has cleansed you. The love now is not the love of the lips. I love you, I love you, I love you. The man is hungry, I love you, and you don't provide food. The man is thirsty. I love you. You don't provide water. And the man is having a challenge in his life. You never visit. I love you. The love that we're talking about, when Christ has cleansed you, will make you now to so love him. You don't want to cheat him. Love him. You don't want to touch his wife. You don't want to commit any secret sin with his wife. You are thoughtful of him. You love her. You don't want to do anything sinful, anything fleshly with her husband. And you love your neighbor and you want to see. You don't want to have a bad example, a sinful example before them. You want everything you do to show the love that will drive them to Calvary. Practical spiritual, tangible, helpful, hopeful love of the bread and see that you love one another with a pure heart. With a pure heart. When you are saved, you know people talk about love, 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 love. And they talk about erotic love. In Greek, is eros. It's of the flesh. Flesh, touching flesh. Touching, intimate with flesh. In the love of adultery. The love of fornication. That one, that's not what you are talking about. That one is polluting. That one is destructive. That one will lead people to hell. But now, you have the love of God from a pure heart. Pure. It's like if your heart is open, people will know that the kind of love you have does not have any sin, any immorality, any evil. You don't want to take advantage of her. You don't want to take advantage of him. Because now, in the pure love of God with fervency, that's what the Lord does when we're saved, we're redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. It's the marvelous heritage of salvation through his blood, but redemption. And the Lord will do it for all of us today. I said the Lord, the God of heaven, will do it for all of us in Jesus' name. He has bought us. He has paid the price. He has given everything that needs to be given so that that blood will convert us, will cleanse us, 
will purge us and will take every form of secret sin, habitual sin, occasional sin, personal sin, society sin, the drunkard sin, the smoker sin, will take everything from us in Jesus' name. Yeah. You know, I'm still going to ask for by Elsa State, amen. Yeah. Point number two now. Point number two, miraculous healing. I said miraculous healing. Yeah. I said miraculous healing. Yeah. I've um, traveled here and there, many places. Why am I telling you that? Am I bragging to say I've been to places you have not been? No. You must understand at my age, I must have gone to here, here and there. It will come to your turn. As we are getting older and older, as old as I am, and I'm not through yet. I said I'm not through yet. So when you stand and then you're traveling along, who knows? Might even be in one plane in the same plane as days go by. What's the person I'm talking to right there? Praise the Lord. So let me tell you my story. Do you want to hear a story? We were in America, New York in particular, some years ago. And we held a series of meetings. And as we were finishing up, we bear way of life there when we finished. Did it allow me to just go like that? Then they started, they lined up, shaking my hand. Glad you came, come again. Glad you came, come again. Do you want me to come back to Bielsa? Yeah, say that now, say that now. Glad you came, come again. And then they were shaking hands and shaking hands. And there was one man on the wheelchair. He was there, glued to his wheelchair. And I was seeing them. Glad you came, come again. Glad you came, come again. He also wanted to say, glad you came, come again. All of a sudden, he rose up from the wheelchair. And he started walking. And then he walked to me, leaving his wheelchair behind, and stretched out his hand and said, glad you came, come again. It will happen to you. And then in my traveling, 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 not this last February now, some years ago, I went to Jalingo. Not this one. I'll tell you about this one later. And as I got there, on the final day, many things happened. One man who had been born lame, 23 years of age, as we said, healing, miraculous healing. And we said, in Jesus' name, he had been walking on a board with rolling tires under that board. And then when we said, in Jesus' name, the power of God struck him. And he rose up and he started walking. That's your turn. It comes to your turn today. And then we had finished. Physically, I was exalted, uh, exhausted. And I was to go into the car and move out so that we can rest for the night to travel on the following day. And they had brought three paralyzed people. And one sitting down, the, one, the other one on the mat, and the other one there. Three of them paralyzed, could not move at all. When we came out, the security brother said, why did you bring all these people here? Already we're finished. And this and I said, hold on, leave them alone. 
And before I entered the car, I said, in Jesus' name, get up. The next one, in Jesus' name, get up. The next one, in Jesus' name, get up. And it was still there. And then we entered the car. And as we entered the car, getting to the gate, I heard shouting. I said, stop. Wait, wait, wait. What's happening there? They said, the first one got up. The second one got up. And the third one got up. God is at work. He's at work in your life. And today, that same redemptive power, resurrection power, the power that gives recovery will come in your life in Jesus' name. Miraculous healing of sickness through the beating, bleeding redeemer. Isaiah chapter 53. And we're reading from verse 4. Isaiah chapter 53. Reading from verse 4. Surely. Let me hear by Yelta, by Yelta state. Surely. Surely. He has born. He has carried our griefs. He has carried them away. Yeah. Your grief, he has carried away. Yeah. Your sin, he has carried away. Yeah. Your sickness, he has carried away. Yeah. Your suffering, he has carried away. Yeah. And carried our sorrows. No more tears. No more sorrow. No more sadness. Tomorrow when you wake up, you wake up in the joy of the Lord. Because Christ, our Redeemer, has carried away our sorrows. Yet, we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Verse 5, but he was wounded for our transgression. He had no transgression of his own. Christ had no sin of his own. He was bruised for iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. Hey, look at this one. And with his stripes, we are healed. We, all of us here. My sister there. My brother there. My son there. My daughter there. We're in the same family now, spiritually. And what he does for the head of the human family, he does with everyone. Healing today. Deliverance today. With his stripes, I am healed. It is confirmed in Jesus' name. Yeah. You remember? When was I last month? 2022, February, end of February. Where did you hear I went? Wajalengo. And many, many miracles took place in fact those who are deaf and dumb it so happened that they had to line them up this one deaf and dumb ears open mouth open the next one ear opened and the tongue loosed the next one ear open ten of them they had to line them up and it happened to them, it will happen to you. That your boy will speak again. That your daughter will speak again. Everything that has bound you, you will discover that there's miraculous healing for everyone here tonight. With his stripes, were healed 
And then I learned of another boy. This boy in the family. The mother testifying. That child had had epilepsy. And many times the epileptic spirit will throw him down. Marks on his head because of injury. Marks on his body because of injury, of epilepsy, of epilepsy. And sometimes for days, every day, two or three times. And then that had been happening from the age of nine. He's not 16. Seven years in a row without respite. The spirit of epilepsy will not allow the boy to rest or the family to rest. And then they came to the crusade on the final day like tonight. Yeah. Well, the final prayer like tonight. Yeah. Well, the final amen like tonight. Yeah. When we said that spirit come out in Jesus name yeah. that spirit came out from that time until this time evil spirit epilepsy will not come back again yeah. it will happen in your family yeah. all those heartaches and all those problems the Lord will take away because with his stripes Tell me, tell me, let heaven hear you, Christ has heard you are healed in Jesus' name. Look at Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 14, Jeremiah chapter 17 reading from verse 14, look at the prayer, simple prayer. Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Can you repeat that prayer? Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Look at the second part of the prayer. Save me, and I shall be saved. Can you say that? For thou art my praise. The Lord will be glorified in your life tonight. Yeah. By his miracle, by his healing, by his deliverance, yeah. he'll be glorified in your life tonight. Yeah. Because whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved, shall be healed. Point number three now. Point number three, meaningful holiness in sanctification through his boundless blameless redemption what does that mean there are times in your own personal life you have said i want to be better than i am now and then on the 31st of december going on to the 1st of january you are making resolution resolution I will not do that again. I will not go there again. I will not buy that thing again. I will not fight again. I will not, I will not, I will not. Resolutions. But you didn't know the power in the blood of the Lamb. And so all those resolutions, like a pack of cards, they fell and they were scattered in the new year. You started the old lifestyle again but now from today let me hear you yeah. from today the power of the blood of the lamb will make you holy from within yeah. righteous from within yeah. i was in togo and the togo people will be hearing me now a woman at had real concern for the husband and the reason is because he was he could have been the medical director in that whole nation the only thing that stopped him was 
drunkenness. That he even kept his job as a medical practitioner. That was the mercy of God. And the wife ran to me and the wife said, My husband has a challenge. Always drinking. Always drinking. And he could not have the power to overcome that drinking habit. I said, invite him. Then I will see him and I'll pray with him. God will set him free. Will give him holiness of life. Like he will give you tonight. Yeah. And she kept on piling pressure on the husband. The meetings are going on. We're almost ending. Come, come. And she did everything a good wife could do to persuade him. So on the final uh, day and the final meeting, uh, they said, okay, I'm coming. Go ahead. Let's go together. I told you I'm coming. Go ahead. And the woman came expecting the husband. And as the husband was coming, uh, he saw a beer parlor by the wayside. And then he branched there. And he got himself all filled up with the wrong kind of stuff. But he still said, I'll still go there. We had finished the meeting. We had said the final prayer. And I was sitting down. At that time, I could still see a few people. And then he staggered in. And I could tell, because the moment he staggered in, I could perceive the heavy odor of that thing, the stuff he had filled himself with. And he sat down. And I said, tell me your story. What do you want? What should we do? He said, I want to be free from this kind of thing. I said, I didn't even allow him to finish. I said, in Jesus' name, you are free. Yeah. And we finished. I was going back home from that day. Anytime he perceived the, the uh, smell of alcohol, it irritated him. He didn't want it anymore. The Lord changed his life. I'm looking at you. The Lord will change your life tonight. Everything you've tried and you say, I wanted to, I wanted to, good intention. But you didn't have uh, the action that will follow and make you a new man or a new woman. Your life will change tonight. And then after he has saved you, it will sanctify you and make you holy. Yes. Can God do it yes. for you? Yes. For you? Yes. Can He do it tonight? Yes. Look at First John chapter one. First of all, from verse nine. First John chapter one, from verse nine. If we confess our sins. Look at that. That's all. That's all. I come. There's no pretense. And I say, God, what can I tell you that you didn't know? This is who I am. This is who I am. And that's who I am. If we confess our sin, final, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins. He'll forgive you tonight. All the past sins of your life since you were born uh, until this time, He is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Say amen. amen. That's fulfillment in your life. Amen. Look at verse 7. In verse 7, it says, If we walk in in the light as he is in the light we have fellowship one with another and the blood of jesus christ his son cleanseth who cleanseth who from all sin 
He will do it for you. Yeah. Can he do it for everybody here at the same time? A mass. Instead of one, one, one after the other, he will do it for everyone. Yeah. He will forgive you. Amen. He will cleanse you. He will give you the grace and the strength and the power to go and sin no more. Amen. And the things I used to do, I do them no more. The places I used to go, I go there no more. The dresses I used to wear, those kind of exotic dressing that will turn the head of other people. And they'll be thinking of, Wanting to do some bad things with you. The dresses I used to wear, I wear them no more. And the drinks I used to drink, I drink them no more. And the I don't like trust fees I used to eat, I eat them no more. Something happened to me because Christ came in. Things are different now in your life. In your family, yeah. in your language, yeah. in your community, yeah. things are different now. Yeah. And it starts with if I confess my sin, He is faithful and just to forgive me all my sin and to cleanse me from all iniquity. He'll do it for you tonight. Amen. It's bowed and it's and eyes open and eyes closed. It's bowed. The Lord on this final day, he doesn't want you to go back home the way you came. Just tell the Lord, oh Lord, I want that change. I want that turning around. I want all those resolutions have been taken. And without your help, I couldn't live right. I want to live right tonight. I want to have redemption, forgiveness, salvation, freedom from all the sins that bound me. Lord, I come. If that's you, and you're coming with all your heart, and you're not having any reservation, Lord, I come. Wherever you are, you rise up. God bless you. You want that change tonight. You want that salvation tonight. You want that forgiveness tonight. You want that transformation of life tonight. Where are you? Raise up your hand. And rise up. Final day. And your salvation is said. Final day. And your forgiveness is said. Final day. And your transformation from old life to the new life is here tonight. God bless you there. The Lord is still waiting for you. He'll change your life. He'll forgive your sin. He'll set you free from those chains of sin that bind you. Get up there. No distraction. Get up there. No disturbance. Get up there. No diversion to another thing. Get up there. And say, Lord, here I am. And whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord over the radio there, over the television there, online, by yourself, in a congregation, anywhere you are, in any part of the world, and you are connected with this message now, stand up right there. And then the Lord, by his blood, will forgive you, will cleanse you, will set you free. Confess, turn away from all that evil. And the Lord is faithful just to forgive you now. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, 
We come as you told us to come. And you said, whosoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved. I pray for everyone now, giving themselves over to the Lord without any reservation. Forgive them in Jesus' name. Save them. In Jesus' name. Transform their lives. Convert them. And give them the grace, God's righteousness, at Christ's expense. Give that to them, everyone now, in Jesus' name. Write their names in the book of life. Well, thank you, Lord. It is done. It, it is done. Yeah. And your salvation has come to everyone that asked of that salvation. In Jesus' name, we pray. Yeah. God bless you. Keep on standing. Our moderating overseer tonight will lead us in this time of counseling. God bless you. Counselors, write their names now. Make sure you take their phone number. And as you take it, you check up. You're welcome to your newfound faith. You're not a child of God. You cannot tell lies. Write their name in capital letter. Take the address, their phone numbers, and check it up. Those at the far away, counselors, make sure you reach there. At my right, extreme end. If they cannot write, you help them. At the very right here, do the same. Please, be fast. Their house address, the name they know them with, As you're writing, make it very clear. The phone numbers, very important. If you are watching online, you just give your life to Christ after the pastor's message, please, you visit what you are seeing on the screen. Fill the number you are seeing there, click to it. And those of us listening on the radio, television, you just give your life to Christ. Send your name, your phone number, and your location, the address. You can see it on the website there, plus 234-915. 444-9263. I repeat again. Plus 
0244-444-9263. There will be a convert rally and there will be a special online banquet for all those watching online who gave their lives to Christ on Sunday, 3rd April is the time, the day, 2022. More details about this will be sent to you. Counselors, let's be fast. Remember this Sunday thought is banquets everywhere in the whole state and the time is 3 p.m. In Yenegua here, the capital, Okutukutu. As you come, the Lord will bless you. Please, let's be fast. And those of us who are seated, be praying and be preparing. Because tonight, every problem you have come with, you will drop it here. The man of God is fully loaded. Whatsoever the mountain, the Lord will roll it away tonight. Cancel us, be fast. By my left hand side, if you're true, you wave and give me signal. Okay, God bless you. What at the middle here? If you're finished, can you wave your hand? If you're finished this way, wave your hand. Okay. At my right hand side, cancel us if you are finished. Can you wave your hand? Be fast. And the supervisors, you'll be gathering the whole thing now. Anywhere you are, just be seated and be praying, preparing yourselves. Any moment from now, there will be a shout. By my right hand side, if you are finished, wave your hand. Let's be fast. Thank God for those who are preparing. If you are finished now, all you do is make sure the people having the challenge, just stand by them. You'll see miracle tonight. If you are finished, wave your hand on the right hand side. Okay, God bless you. We can stand up now. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Final day miracle catcher. Where are you? Praise the Lord. I will catch. I will catch. Our oh, uh, in Cameroon. Our oh, having a crusade like this. There were boys playing 
at the corner of the crusade there. When the message was going on, like boys, they were just enjoying themselves. But among them, there was one deaf and dumb boy playing the football with the other kids. And then I said, now, I'm going to throw miracle at you. You will catch it. Then they stopped playing the football. They were attentive because they wanted to catch. Anybody wanting to catch today? And the moment we prayed, and I said, it's there. That deaf and dumb child caught it. Ears open, tongue loosed, and they brought him out to give a testimony. Final day, cancer will vanish away. All those pains and the swelling of cancer, everything will vanish away. That swelling, making the tummy to be like this, going ahead of you before you get there, that thing will come down in Jesus' name. The brain problem, insanity, madness, and the power of the name of Jesus comes out tonight. Praise the Lord, you are delivered. This is the final night for your blind eyes to open. For limb legs to be strong. For paralysis and stroke to vanish away. The final night of miraculous healing for everyone. It's coming your way. I said it's coming your way. Raise up that hand. The Lord is right here, right there by your side. He comes with miracle. He comes with healing. He comes with deliverance. And the Lord will perform, perfect it right now in your life in Jesus' name. One hand up. The other hand, you lay where you have the challenge. And when you hear the final amen, you'll check up. The miracle of healing will have been deposited in your body. Amen. Father, we come. Father, we pray. Father, we demand that right now, your love, your mercy, your compassion, will come to everyone tonight in Jesus' name. Those here at the Alpha location, those there over the radio, over the television, online, everywhere, all over the globe, because you are present everywhere. Touch, heal, Deliver everyone in Jesus' name. On this final night, that evil spirit, tormenting spirit, vexing the hearts and the lives and the brain of the people, I command, come out in Jesus' name. The swelling of goiter, swelling in the tummy, swelling elephantiasis in the legs, swelling of an ear, or any other kind of swelling. I command you right now, this moment, come out in Jesus' name. Internal sickness, causing pain, 
in your kidney, in your livers, in your lungs, internal parts of your body. Lord, I pray that you touch and heal them right now. All that pain, I command, come out in Jesus' name. Blindness, the bandage of the devil, come in your sight. I remove it right now. Lord, open their blind eyes. Clear up the darkness and the dimness in their eyes in Jesus' name. Deaf and dumb, it's your turn. That blocked ear open in Jesus' name. That dumb tongue be loosed in Jesus' name. The miracle of hearing, the miracle of speaking. Lord, perform it for everyone needing that in Jesus' name. Arthritis. Stiffness of the joints, short leg, grow out. And all the paralysis and the broken bones, be mended right now. Be healed right now. Be joined together right now. Lord, confirm your word in Jesus' name. Everywhere. Let the incurable be cured right now. Let the incredible happen to everyone right now in Jesus' name. Make the impossible possible in Jesus' name. Everywhere on the grounds here, everywhere outside there, online, in every congregation connected, everywhere, over the radio, over the television, everywhere on YouTube and Zoom, everywhere with everyone, I release your power upon everyone. Healed, you're healed. Delivered, you're delivered. Set free, you are set free. Yeah. And the power of the Lord operates in your life, operates in your body, yeah. operates in your spirit, yeah. operates in your brain, yeah. operates in your family yeah. without any hindrance right now. Yeah. Lord, let there be a confirmation. Yeah. In Jesus' name I pray. It is done. I said, it is done. Check out your body. The miracle is right there now. Check it up. It has happened.